You guys like arcade games, what about natural disasters? More specifically, earthquakes. In this video, I make a working earthquake simulator and then build structures to test it out on. For this mechanism to work, I need to convert the rotation of my Lego motors into the back and forth movement. If I take this Technic beam and clip it into this gear with a loose pin, we can get a back and forth movement out of the motor. But because this structure has to support and shake tall frames of buildings, I'm gonna add another motor on the opposite side and make it another beam mechanism to hook them up. But obviously, it isn't gonna be that simple. For this to work, I have to add another gear in front of one of the motors to spin it the right way, otherwise one spins forward and one spins backward, which isn't going to work, so by making a small frame for the gear and hooking it all up, I can get a somewhat functional prototype. But somewhat is kind of an understatement. The axle I use to hook in the gear has a small end cap on it, which gets in the way of the spinning beam and flips it up if it tries to rotate past the center point of the gear. But thankfully, it was a simple fix to just switch out the type of axle I used. Then I need to build a little platform for our base plate to be hooked into. By using these loose pins again and these plates with Technic holes in the bottom, I can clip on our 16x16 blaze plate. And with that done, I now need to build a sort of track for the ground to slide back and forth on. It can't be another base plate because those aren't smooth and it has to have a gap for the middle of the mechanism underneath. So I went with stacking a bunch of 2x4 LEGO bricks on each edge of the base plate to make a sort of rail for it to slide on. Then I put a bunch of tiles on the top to make it slide well and gave it a test run. It worked pretty well for a first test, but there was one main setback that I wanted to fix before moving on. Because the gears aren't perfectly lined up, each beam pushes at a slightly different time, causing the ground that is shaking to have a slight side-to-side -side sway. But it's a simple enough fix, so I just built a small wall on each side with these one and a half stud wide plates and eliminated almost all of the unwanted movement. Next, I needed to build a wall around all the sides so that it didn't look like a jumbled mess. So I started with multiple layouts of dark orange bricks, rip my corner garage, and then added one layer of this weird green color. Don't ask why I chose these colors, because I have no idea, but it works. Once I had it all boxed in, except for one side because the mechanism sticks out there, I put in all the mechanical parts like this battery box, which powers this infrared receiver, which is connected to both motors, then I can use this controller to test the buildings at different speeds. And with all that built, there were only two more things to do before I could make buildings and utterly destroy them. First, I needed to add a bunch of large plates around the edges of the model so it all matched the part of the ground that shakes, and then add some details on the top. But of course, this wouldn't be an RJ and Bricks video without a bunch of problems along the way. I started building the plates to go around the outside of the build and added a bunch of supports for all the plates that didn't line up with the edge of the center platform because for some reason the idiot designer of this build decided to make the walls on the outside one plate lower than the inside and didn't even make each side have an even number of studs. Like I don't even know what they were thinking. Oh, that was me. Anyways, the beams kept falling over, but after quite a while, all the plates were in place, and finally I could start decorating the top. Or so I thought, but I quickly realized after doing a test run of the shaking ground, I realized that the infrared receiver can't connect to the controller if it's surrounded by Lego plates, which is a problem. So I took off the top plates of that side and pulled the receiver out. Thankfully, the cords were long enough that they could still go underneath the plates, but then I put them back on and twisted the cords into a bunch, and honestly, I think having the receiver on top is kinda cool looking. And finally, with everything working like it should, I can add some details on the top and start building frames to knock over. But right as I started the usually easy part, I got building block. This doesn't usually happen to me, but for some reason I could not come up with any designs for the build that I liked. After a lot of trial and error though, I finally got onto something that I liked. I used these bar pieces as a sort of fence idea and then added some terraforming to look like piles of rock and dirt. The infrared receiver ended up looking like some sort of abandoned machinery and the ground around it looks like a ruined construction site, which actually fits really well. But with all that done and everything working, I could finally get to work building structures to test out the earth face. I started with a 16x16 base plate and added beams in each of the four corners and then made two and stacked them. I put it on the shake table and this was basically the moment of truth. If this didn't work, then I didn't really know what to do. I started on level 1 which didn't really do anything to the build and of course there was yet another problem. Because the shaking part of the build is only attached at one point, it can pivot, and when there is more weight on top, it makes the whole thing flip back and forth a ton. So to fix it, I added a bar across it so that it's held in place. Then I ran it again. So that wasn't really as epic as I had imagined it, so I added like five more layers to get this massive skyscraper frame thing and put it on the ground and started it up. It was going fairly well until I sped it up and...
Now, of course, there has to be a slow-mo. That was super cool, so I built the whole thing again and tested it one more time. Honestly, it's so cool looking and the sound makes the slow-mo just so satisfying. But there was one final thing I actually wanted to test. If I take a bunch of these 2 by bricks and stack them on top of each other without actually locking them together, I can make a building that holds itself up but that will fall over if it's shaken too hard. I started by building a small frame at the bottom that is sturdy enough to not break when the ground shakes, and then built up a box without pushing any pieces down to interlock. Then once I had it at a height that was good, I gave it a slight push down so that the pieces didn't just go flying off immediately. And with all that built, it was ready for the final test. I turned it on and put the speed up until it started collapsing. but one of the falling bricks actually got stuck in the platform preventing it to shake anymore. So I cleaned it out of all the bricks that fell off and got ready to test it for the final time. But before we go on to that, please do consider subscribing. It's free and it really helps me out a ton. I've also recently hit 30,000 subscribers, which just blows my mind, so thank you all so much. With that out of the way, I turned up the speed and shook the building down. But of course, there was actually one more final test that I wanted to try. So I took a bunch of these pillar pieces, stacked them up super high, and stuck them on the plate to see how long it would take before they fell over. To my surprise, they didn't actually fall over. It wiggled back and forth, and the slow-mo looks pretty cool, but I guess there's just enough clutch power on the pieces that they don't want to fall over. I think it's because when the pillar moves one way, the plate moves the other way, which puts it moving the other way, but then the plate moves the other You get what I mean, it kind of counteracts everything. But with that done, all the tests I wanted to do were complete. This was really fun to build, and the slow-mos of the buildings falling over were really, really cool. I also have a Discord server, so if you have any video ideas, just want to talk to me, or just check it out, there will be a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.